Okay, guys. Uh, I'm happy. I would like to get things started. So if you want to grab some water or something, that's uh, that would be the best time to do that. Mm. So welcome. I'm extremely happy to have you here. And today I'd like to talk with you a little bit on why building websites is actually not a good business. And <laughs> yeah, and why you con you should consider either quitting it or decreasing the amount of new websites you build. And I'm not joking. So my name is Alexander. I'm from Poland. Uh, so I'm terribly sorry that's my second language, so it might not be perfect. Uh, I started my own career 15 years ago, which is exactly half of my life uh, ago, and as a freelancer. Uh, then my business has grown into a 50 people, a 15 people agency. Uh, and then we realized that building websites is a nice business, but it's difficult to get your bills paid every month because sometimes it's either fist or famine. And it's difficult with this instability, especially if you have a lot of people or, you know, or, or a mort mortgage to pay. It's, it's not that a good thing if you don't know how much um, work you'll have and whether you'll get paid the next month or the mo month afterwards. So we started to do maintenance. That was our idea because we thought, ah, oh, we'll get money every month and that would be nice. Mm. But then we realized that the thing is that maintenance has not a good margin. Mm. And we were looking for solutions to solve that and it occurred that there is none of them on the market. So we've built our own internal tool to do that. And then it occurred that it helped us so much that we decided to share it with uh, all people around. And that's perfect dashboard. And it became so successful that we stopped doing agency work and now we're helping other agencies, web developers, freelancers uh, to manage websites more efficiently. So now I'm no longer doing any agency work. I am the CEO uh, of perfect dashboard. And Perfect Dashboard is just a tool for website maintenance. Currently, we help almost 4,000 4, web administrators in 70 plus countries. And I'm telling you that because some of the data that, we'll, that I will share with you later today uh, is, uh, you, is, comes from those thousands of websites that, have, uh, that we have access to so we can see what are the problems they're facing, how they uh, how they work with updates and things like uh, things like this. Uh, okay, so you know a little bit about myself. I'd like now to learn a little bit about you. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask you to raise your hand if you build websites. Okay, it means like almost everybody, every one of you do that. Thank you. And what about maintenance? Who offered maintenance? Okay. Is there anyone who's not building websites but doing maintenance only? Not yet. I hope that after this presentation, you'll consider this path. Uh, <laughs> we, we definitely have a trend where we're not selling as many websites and we're, we've got about 150 clients and in the last two years, we've, we just keep doing updates and upgrades for clients more so than actually going out selling. Okay. We, it's still a piece of fan, sometimes it's a lot of it. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Okay, good to know that. So po possibly you could take my place here and <laughs> give, uh, give this presentation instead of me. Uh, perfect. Mm. So why website management and why it's better compared to website development? First of all, mm, it's a good money because you sell it once and then you charge every month. Uh, secondly, you just know your income. It's not fist or famine. It's Steady income that you know how much you will earn next month. You can plan your expenses. And then my favorite part is that you don't need client acceptance. Because I remember numerous times when I was a freelancer, and I thought, okay, I will close this deal and this deal, and this way I'll get my bills paid. But then it occurred that, hmm, client is not responding to my emails, or he's sending me another set of changes on the w to the website. And this way, instead of getting this money in, I don't know, May, I get it in June or even July. And that wasn't best for my personal uh, finance at the time. And especially it became a problem when I started to have people uh, in the company that, I, that need to get paid for uh, every, month, uh, every month. So uh, with maintenance, you don't have that problem. You just invoice them every month and get paid. Then it scales great. Because if you want to build twice as many websites, you will 
need almost twice as much work to do that. And when it comes to maintenance, it's not true. If you can get your work organized, then you just need only a fraction of that time to manage, uh, to double the number of websites you manage. And then the third reason, third reason, yeah, it is, it's also good for community. Because I think, bless you, uh, I don't know if you have heard that, but I hear it from people all over the world, and I, it, that's my 20th, 20th event this year, uh, that clients more and more are not interested in having websites on Joomla. Because they say, well, we had a friend of, uh, I had a friend of mine, and he got his website hacked, and it was on Joomla. You know, some, uh, my previous website was built on Joomla, and it got hacked. And the thing is that actually Joomla, when it's up to date, is one of the safest CMSs out there. The problem is that if it's outdated, then it's a very easy uh, target for hackers. And there are automated hacking scripts going after those outdated Joomla websites and hacking them on the scale like 70,000 websites a day. Mm, that's, that's, and the more popular the website in, is in Google, the more likely it is to get hacked. That's why mm, if we keep websites updated and we manage them properly, we also protect the reputation of our project, this way helping all of us as a community. So that's why it's, let's say, an additional important reason why you should consider not to deliver websites and then say to clients, okay, then, you know, manage it by yourself. Mm. So I hope that those three reasons are enough for you to co at least consider uh, maintenance uh, in your company. But the question that comes after is, you know, how to find clients for that? And here are some sources. First, those are customers you already have a relationship with. Because it's a natural thing that you can just say that, OK, building website is just the first part of this continuous relationship, which is maintenance. Mm. So that would be the first group you can target. Those people that, are you, that, are, that you are in touch on a daily basis right now, building websites for them. Then, if you are on the market for some time, I'm sure that you've been that you have long list of past customers that you can reach out to and tell them that now you have this new service that you can offer. And what's more, as they have trusted you in the past, they're more likely to trust you now and, uh, and decide to go with maintenance right now. Then, if that would not be enough for you and you'll be hungry for more, then there are people who get hacked. There is plenty of them. They are everywhere, on Joomla forums, on Facebook. They're looking for help all over the internet. And if you just find those leads, answer to them, you will have quite a lot of new customers that need their website uh, to be cured, and then they need protection on the daily basis. And additionally, we also get quite a lot of inquiries within our platform. And as we don't do maintenance ourselves anymore, we just forward it to the best administrators uh, we have in the system from local communities. So if there is someone coming uh, asking us about help and he's from Texas, then we'll recommend someone from Texas. And we usually do it this way so that they have someone local to, to help. Of course, that's not the main source of customers and don't count on it as the main source. But yeah, we get more and more of those leads. And actually, we are actively looking for uh, administrators. And we, com we see how they manage the websites they have, because we have this data thanks to their website being connected to Perfect Dashboard, and then we can send them the leads. But let's go to how to persuade a new customer. Uh, so usually I tell this small story that, you know, if you have a brick and mortar store and you have a slippery floor out there and the customer will come and uh, he sleep on this floor and, you know, twist her ankle or broke her leg, uh, everybody will, ho will hold you accountable for that. And actually websites are no different. You are responsible for your customers. Because the hackers that are trying to get to those websites are not interested in the website themselves. Because usually there's nothing there. There's nothing very interesting in hairdresser's website. But some people, ah, sorry, I think I have went a little bit too far. Yeah, that's the place I should be a new customer, yeah. So the thing is that, um, where was I? Uh, ah, uh, so, uh, you need, yeah. 
<laughs> sorry? Yeah, slippery floor and holding accountable. Sorry, I've lost, uh, I've lost my... Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, okay, I, I, I hope you know. You're welcome to join us at JN Beyond next year. It's in my home city, so, you know, uh, it will be very nice if you can join us. Uh, but to keep on uh, track. So, uh, websites are not that interesting uh, as the target for hackers. But there are people who visit those websites. And their mobile phones and their computers are an interesting target. Because in your phones and your, uh, and your computers, there is a lot of interesting data that can be obtained by hackers and used for some purpose. That's why websites are only the gateway. Mm, and you need to, uh, one of the best ways to get new customers for maintenance is to make them understand that their websites will be hacked in order to get to their end users and that they will be held accountable for that. Mm, so that's one way to do that. Another story I like is the car story or the car metaphor you have here. So, of course, you can buy a car and never do the checkup. And it will run for some time, I'm sure. But doing regular checkups is the best way to keep your car in a good condition. And the website is no different from that. And then here's come, here comes my favorite metaphor. It's the garden metaphor. Because if you plan great garden and you just stop doing anything with that, it won't look the same in three months and six months and a year time. Because to keep it in the shape, you need to preserve it. And that's exactly the same thing with website. So those are three strategies I used to use when I was selling website maintenance myself. And from what I hear from people from different communities that I speak to, it, it's quite successful still. So feel free to use it. No copyright here. Mm. But it is different when it comes to existing customers. Because if you have built something for, a per for someone three years ago, well, you can't tell them now that they are responsible. Because you should have told them that three years ago. So here are some tricks what to do with the existing customers. Uh, first, there is my favorite bullshit argument uh, point <laughs> that, you know, times there are changing. Yeah, new technologies are changing quickly. You need to adjust and you need to, you know, refresh your website in order to protect your brand reputation. Works quite often. But when it comes to Joomla, we have a better point here. Because as you know, uh, a few weeks ago, there has been a huge security loophole detected, uh, and all Joomla websites need to be patched in order to stay secure. So you can tell them that, well, until recently, actually there was no reason uh, to maintain websites, because it was OK. You know, it should be better. It would be better if they uh, be updated, but it wasn't crucial. And right now, it's, uh, it's a very important matter. So that's why. They, uh, they should start working with you right now, and that's why you're starting to offer this new service if you haven't offered them yet. So that's usually the best way to sneak into your existing customers or your past customers to make them pay and avoid this question, why haven't you offered that to me earlier? <laughs> so that's, that's a very important point, because not every website is ready to be maintained from the day one. Well, I would even say more. Usually, none of the websites is ready to be maintained on the day one because they are outdated. There may be some traps in there. And you want to disarm those traps before you will start doing the maintenance. Uh, so the model I would suggest to you is that you always start with the initial preparations. So if you haven't coded the website yourself or you've done it years ago and you're not sure uh, what exactly is in there because, you know, it was some time ago and your skills were not as good as they are right now. So reviewing the code, updating everything, and then, you know, make, uh, strengthening as many things as possible so that you can update it in the future is always a good idea for a start. Sometimes, you know, you can change some hack in the core into a plugin so that you can update it uh, easier in the future. That's always a good start. Then the scope of the management. Let's go into some legal details, uh, as I am a graduated lawyer. Not in the US, so it will be, let's say, general legal advice, not uh, specific to Canada or US. So uh, you may have heard about service legal agreement. That's the name. That's the legal name for the contract that you are actually sing is signing. The thing is that actually there is nothing like the set of the activities that should be involved uh, in the maintenance. 
it's the matter of agreement upon the parties what will be included and what, be, what would be outside the scope. Uh, and there are some standards. Uh, so when it comes to standards, you'll see it on the right side of the screen. Usually it's backups, updates, and monitoring. Then there are some extras that you can add. Uh, there, there will be upgrades, it will be hosting, it will be content management and changes on the website. Uh, now let's make some things straight. What is, what is the difference between updates and upgrades according to you? Yeah, and as we know in Joomla word, upgrades are usually painful. <laughs> so I would suggest you avoid putting that in the fixed management fee, because you will end up spending much too much time on upgrading with those websites, especially from 3.x to 4 something, because we don't know for sure how good will be the updating tool. So I would suggest keeping upgrades outside of the scope. Then here's come a, here comes a second uh, thing. Monitoring versus update. Where do you see a difference in here? Monitoring will tell you when file changes have happened, when a script has been uploaded that wasn't approved, um, all sorts of things versus hosting is basically providing an environment where the site can live and breathe. Yeah, that's, that's mostly the thing. And the, thi the part that, I want, that I'd like to emphasize here is that if you're responsible for monitoring the website, you only have to know when the website is down and then let the hosting provider know, hey, the website is down, you should do something about it. If you uh, do the hosting for them, even if you resell it, then it's you who is responsible for that. And you need to you know, get up in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner, uh, get out of the table and fix the problem. So you know, t keep that in mind. If you, keep, if you sell hosting as a, as a part of your uh, management service, then it will be you who is responsible. If you do the monitoring thing, uh, well, my trick in the agency time was that we had a monitoring script, obviously, and whenever the website was down, we were just sending an email to the customer. Well, dear customer, we've noticed your website is down. We're taking care of it. And at the same time, we've been sending email to hosting company. Well, the website is down. Do something about it. And that was it. That was all we done when it comes to monitoring. It worked perfect for ATS. So that would be my trick to, to sell you when it comes to monitoring. OK, now let look, let's look at scalability of those things. So some of those services scales pretty well, which means that you can increase the number of customers without increasing your workload significantly. And some of them are not very scalable, like upgrades. We've discussed it before. Content management, because every time you had to add the new article, you need to spend some time on that. It's difficult to automate it. And then, of course, changes on the website, because it's it's always painful. So if you want to keep maintenance scalable, stick to those in the first row. Then let's discuss the price. Mm, OK, so maybe we should start with a little exercise. Can I ask all of you to stand up for a minute? And I know that some of you, or actually most of you, uh, is already doing some maintenance. And those of you who are not doing uh, maintenance in the moment, I'd like to ask you to think about the, uh, the price. So now I would like to ask you what's, in your opinion, a reasonable price, monthly price, net price in US dollars for, uh, the, for the maintenance service that will include backups, monitoring, and updates? Mm, that would be uh, the question. And if anyone thinks that it's under $50 per month, I'd like uh, you to sit down. 50. Under, under $50. To the client? To the cl yeah, I'm speaking about the, pr the price that client will pay you. Can I stay up if it depends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, of course, we're, uh, we, it's, uh, there is no like one price, but I'm speaking about the average thing that you get. OK, $100 a month? $200 a month? <laughs> OK. So uh, that's good to know because it differs from place to place. For example, I've been doing the same thing in Germany. And it occurred that uh, the average price uh, that when most people were back on their seats was like uh, $50. Uh, that, would, that was the price. And here it was like $100. That was, let's say, 
the, the, the average of the average. So that's uh, in, 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 in inter it's interesting because it differs from country to country, and it actually has nothing to do uh, with the, let's say, average income for in the country, for example. Uh, so it's, it's good to know that, especially if you want to go overseas and sell it not only in the US, Canada, but also in, in other parts of the, parts of the world. Uh, OK. Mm, so how much shall I charge? There are some rules that are, uh, let's say, general rules for the old IT market, which means that if you have large projects, every company, especially in the, on the enterprise level, will be ready to pay like 20 25% every year for maintenance. That's sort of given. Uh, it will work that way. In smaller projects, it's more difficult to sell that. But from my experience, clients will usually accept price at 40, 30 to 40% uh, of the development cost. It's more difficult because they're not used to paying for maintenance, and you need to educate them why they should do that. But that's more or less the price. And one more uh, thing in here, try not to sell maintenance at $10 a month. Because the invoicing cost and time you spend on that will kill you. So don't go below certain minimum. Uh, then a little bit about the business model. So we've been talking about the initial preparations. That should be charged as a one-time fee. Or you can include that in monthly pricing, in the monthly fee if you think that would be better for your business model. Then all the scalable services we're talking about. So updating, keeping things backed up, and monitoring can go on monthly or yearly recurring subscription. Uh, and then there, there are those non-scalable services. And I suggest you either bill it per hour, uh, or you just bill it on you know every time I agreed fee. So don't put those into, into your recurring subscription, because it will kill your business uh, sooner or later, because somebody will give you, you know, 10 posts to add, and it will take you, I don't know, five hours, and you, ha you can spend like two on this website a month to keep it profitable. Uh, Sometimes uh, it's wise thing to add certain number of hours into the subscription. So it's like I'm doing updates, monitoring, and uh, backups for you. And I also add two hours extra for some other small things that you need to do. Mm, and that's, that's another way you could try to do that. Uh, so you can add just some hours to the recurring subscription. If they go over those hours, you tell them uh, your two hours that were included in the plan are over now. And you need to go and, uh, and and you need to pay me extra for that if you want to happen it this month, or we can wait till the next one. <sighs> one thing about the agreement, or a couple of things about the agreement. So first of all, keep it in a written form, uh, or at least an email, mm, so that you can return to it and say, ah, we've agreed on that scope for that price. Uh, and the thing that I found very successful is to divide the agreement into two parts, like a very short agreement form where you put only the things that are necessary, like the name of the parties, the scope of the services, obviously the price, uh, and the second document that are general terms and conditions that you keep all the information, you know, how quickly you'll update, update the website after the new update has been released and all this stuff. Mm. If you want to see uh, the templates so that we've been using for the international market, uh, you're more welcome to use them. They're available on, for free on our platform, so you can just log in and download them. Uh, you know, we, we've been sharing the, the, these uh, with other developers. You can use it. It's not adjusted to the US market for sure, uh, but we've been using it with international clients all over the earth, and it was OK. OK, now let's try to do uh, the price calculation. So if you take a look in here, uh, those are usually the steps that uh, we have in the update process. So first of all, you need to learn that there is an update, which is sometimes tricky, because not all the updates are in, uh, in, are in Joomla update uh, system. So you, don't, you won't see all the updates when you log into this, uh, to your Joomla backend. Then you need to do the backup. Then, as Nicolas from Akiba always say, you need to verify the backup integrity, because from the data we have, we know that one out of 10 backups uh, is usually corrupted in the backup process. So we won't be able to use that. Mm, then you need to install the updates, you know, click somewhere. Uh, then you need to test it uh, and see whether the website is broken or not. 
which sometimes is easy when the page goes blank because then you know something is wrong. But if it's just a small shift in left or right, it's not that easy. And then you need to fix the bugs. Uh, from, what I s from what I see in the platform, it seems like half of the updates cause some kind of uh, some kind of bugs on the website. Some of them are acceptable, I believe, some of them are not, but it's more or less half of the websites that are affected with the update. Mm. Now, uh, if we do this calculation, it's like two hours, 40 minutes per one update. Uh, if you cal calculate, you will do a weekly update at $40 per hour. It means that you should charge customers 400 US dollars a month, over 400 which, as we were able to see here, is not an acceptable price on the market most of you are in. And actually, that was the problem we were facing. And that's why we've discovered that the thing here is an automation. That's, that's the way to solve the issue. And now let me show you what tricks we've been using uh, to achieve that. So here's the list again. And here are our solutions. So when it comes to learning about the updates, we just had a Google Calendar with all the reminders. So we were visiting websites of certain extension developers that were not as kind as to get inform us uh, in the website backend. And we we're just checking, OK, whether this extension developer has released a new version of his extension. And if yes, then we're downloading it and uploading it to all the websites. When it comes to backups, yeah, Akiba was a great help for us. And I think it's still for most of you. Um, then when it comes to backup integrity, we had a simple bash script that was just going after the files and checking whether they are OK and not corrupted. Mm, installing updates is not an issue. Just log in and click. Uh, then when it comes to testing, we've been using Codeception. Uh, I don't know if anyone from you, of you is familiar with that, but that's a very powerful testing engine. And it's also being used to test Joomla itself. So the official Joomla project has a testing team that uses Codeception. The issue with it, it's very simple. It's used very simple PHP that even a person that uh, do not know, does not know the P, uh, PHP can use it. It's like I see and you put the name of the element you see. Like, you know, I see and you put the header they want to, they should see. So the string that they should see. It's, it's really easy. You c every, every person can write code. Uh, of course, it becomes tricky. Uh, it becomes tricky when it comes to details. And sometimes it's uh, my devs hate using Codeception. But once you do the test, they are really helpful. Uh, but of course, you need to write them first. We, that's, that's an issue. So that was most of the tricks that we've been using uh, in, in time. Mm, and it helped us to automate the work a little more. Uh, then there are some tools that you may ha ha have heard of. I've already mentioned Akiba. Uh, this cloud over there is my Joomla. I'm sure some of you, at least some of you, are familiar with this solution. Uh, then there is Watchfully. Mm, there is Perfect Dashboard, which is our solution. And there is SiteGround, which is a hosting company, but they do quite a lot of those uh, services. They have them built in, in the platform. Sometimes it's for good, sometimes it's for bad, because, for example, they automatically update websites, mm, which sometimes breaks them. But they say it's more important to have them updated than uh, than to have to have them broken or to have them hacked. Sorry, mm. but yeah, with some of those with those tools, you can address at least some of the issues. So mm. here is the calculation that I've done based on our own tool. Because, uh, for example, with us, you can automate those steps. And if you look at this set, then it gives you an idea that. One, because uh, we can automate all those steps, backup, verification, updates, and testing. So it means that one update will take you one hour and 12 minutes. And you can offer four updates a month at 200, uh, 200 bucks, which is better price. But if you still think it's too much on your market, then you can just offer less updates in every, every month. For example, you can go with one update a month. Or something like this. Depend, and this, I think, one update a month you could offer at like 50 bucks, and it would be okay. Mm. So then, depending on your customer, uh, depending on your customer, you can uh, you can adjust it. But definitely, if you want to have a good margin on website maintenance, you need automation. Mm. 
and uh, that's that will that's what I've discovered throughout my uh, journey and my discovery as a person that has been running uh, let's say one person freelance and then uh, moderate agency so that was mostly what I wanted to share with mostly all what I wanted to share with you uh, I would like once again to ask you to join me on this crusade to make internet a safer place and keep the websites updated because it's good for your business and it's also good for the project which is more and more important because you hear you hear all those said things about Joomla and you know there is uh, its future in dark colors and it's not it some parts of it depends on you and the more websites you keep up to date and secure the better Joomla future will be so it's up to you and I hope that together we can make internet safer place and Joomla a more popular CMS thank you It's between one and two dollars per month per domain, depending on the plan. Okay, are there any questions connected with what I've just said? I wonder if, you know, within the maintenance agreement that you set up with a client, if the bug piece could be kept separate. I do. That's exactly what I do. Any issues that come from the updates that I do, I bill X. That's true, because uh, bugs are usually the difficult part, because they are there and it takes, it takes time to eliminate them. If you can make your customers pay for that uh, extra, that's perfect. I found it difficult, because they usually say, well, it was you who built the website, and you should have built it in such a way. Uh, and of course, it's difficult to explain to them that you couldn't have known uh, back then that the website, that the update will work in that way or something like this. So if you can do it, that's perfect. That's, m you know, make them pay for that because this way you get some extra profitability in here. How do you sell that? What do you say to your customers? I have a list. Included, boom, 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 boom. Not included, boom, 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 boom. Are they looking and saying, I don't understand what, what is a bug? Why, why am I responsible? I don't say, I don't use the word bug. Okay. I say, Yeah, if you can make them understand that, right. that you know, the, it was circumstances that have changed and they need to pay for that, that's perfect. But you know, there is a very old story that developers always say it's servers. People from uh, well, server administrators always say, no, it's the code. Uh, and customers know that already because, you know, we've been like 25 years into that business and the stories just, you know, uh, are all along the place. So if you can make it, then perfect. From my experience, it's difficult to keep customer satisfaction high if you do that, because in time, uh, they will just, f you know, it's convenient for them that they pay you like, I don't know, 200 bucks a month and they have the thing covered. They can plan their expenses as well. And then they w if they have something extra every month because you were fixing bugs, which is none of your fault, fault, but they can plan it in advance, then it becomes tricky. So I, I would suggest middle of the road approach. So I would add some hours into the plan for bug fixing and say, okay, if there will be something very serious that will extend those three, five, whatever hours, then I will charge you extra. Because mm, I, I feel that may, there might be some customer relationship problem here if you go with, uh, with the option, I charge you for every extra bug that is in there.
the only site, and it took me, you know, three or four hours of digging through GitHub mm -hmm. to figure it out. So in that instance, charge the client. But if there's something that's happening on all the sites as a result of the Joomla upgrade, go in and look at the. Yeah, then you charge the Joomla project. Uh, <laughs> but the thing that's is. The middle of the road thing where you say, well, in certain instances, the client should bear the cost because it was above and beyond. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Uh, Yeah, I would suggest. Yeah, I totally understand your point of view. Uh, however, you should remember that what you're selling here is actually the sense of security and the kind of insurance. So the thing is to have so many websites out there that if you have problem with two of them and you need to spend extra twenty hours there. It's okay. You can. Uh, you. It's, it has been paid for by the other customers. Yeah, so. Yeah, but you just need to grow quickly because maintenance has sense only if you have like 50 websites per person and up from that. At the, when, at the end of our agency work, we had 90 websites per person. Per, we have website administrator and he had 90 websites he was responsible for. And this way you can make good money out of it. Yeah. If you manage five websites, that's not good. Go and look for more customers. I've told you how. If you need more advice, I'm happy to help you. Because, uh, yeah, managing five websites makes no sense. Because once one of them are broken, you don't have the others that can pay for that. My suggestion would be uh, make sure you have a credit card and set up the billing to be automatic instead of invoicing and chasing it down every month. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, invoicing is a huge problem in Poland. I heard it's not in the US. But I if you have a problem with that, then yes. Uh, then that would be a great thing. However, I've heard that checks are still quite popular uh, in the U.S. So, uh, yeah, that's what I heard from most of my U.S. customers uh, saying that, yeah, their customers pay them with checks sent by traditional post. And, and they pay on time because they don't want their website taken down. Right. <laughs> okay, that's, that's yeah, but if you can do it using credit card billing, yeah, that's even better because this way you are you know it will be there. However, you know, we bill our customer credit cards and it's not that good actually. Uh, we get like 20-25% rejection every time because somebody has run out of uh, his credit limit uh, or that's the debit card and his account is empty. You know, we all know we're working with freelancers mostly they have good and bad times. So <laughs> we totally get it. So we, really la we are relaxed uh, with, with that. Any more questions or suggestions, comments? Okay, awesome. if not, thank you very much. <laughs>